Good morning everyone. Good morning. And I want to start with a small exercise. Which pair appears to be lighter in color to you? The one on the left? Or the one on the right? Okay, all of you are right. Because it's identical, it's the same color. I want to show you one more. Try to focus on that big ball in the center. What appears to move here? Is it the background that's moving or is it the ball that's moving? If you say nothing, you're right because nothing here is moving. But if you try to focus on this big circle, you sometimes get the feeling that the background is moving. Now these optical illusions happen because of our brain perceives visual information specifically based on context. And this is part of cognitive psychology. It influences our perception, our emotions, and our decisions. In simple terms, context shapes perception. Similar to these optical illusions, how we design our technology influences how we feel, how we behave, and how we act. I want to bring your focus on a topic that's very important when you're talking about equity by design, because equity by designing is building technology to include and respect everyone. Now, I want to bring your attention on HCI, Human Computer Interaction. This is a multidisciplinary study which focuses on a couple of very interesting factors such as computer science, cognitive psychology, ergonomics, design and arts, as well as social and organizational psychology. Because when we talk about building technology to include and respect everyone, we need to understand all the broader concepts that's involved. Because if a system is designed poorly, it can frustrate, alienate users and make them feel really uncomfortable. On the flip side, if you design thoughtfully, carefully, you can make them feel safe comfortable and empowered. But let me tell you how I came across this topic through my own personal journey. I had to take you back to 2012. I was a passionate music lover and I was so frustrated based on the type of music apps I had on my mobile in 2012. How many of you remember these kind of apps we used to have? Some of you. So we had them pre-installed, they were forced into our devices, but this was horrible. I was so frustrated and I knew we can do so much better to fix this problem. Why? Because I started my career as an HCI engineer. So I knew exactly what needs to be done to fix this problem. So I created Flipbeats, a music app designed from the ground up to include everyone and provide a highly intuitive user experience. It had the most advanced audio configurations, the ones that you would find in a professional recording studio. We had a highly customizable user interface where you could change colors, change the layouts to your heart's desire. I even threw in some interesting features such as sound health profile. Because when you jam into your music, sometimes you forget your sound health. So this allows to reduce those difficult, high intensity decibel levels to protect your hearing. I'm a visual person, so I think in a spectrum analyzer to visualize the beat of the music you are listening to. But most importantly, I'm very proud. We rolled out flip beats in six global languages because music is a universal language. And I wanted this app to be accessible to as many people as possible. And slowly, we started becoming a bit of a global hit because people started using flip beats not just to listen to music, but to connect with one another purely based on their musical taste. Regardless of their background, skin color, religion, ethnicity, language, did not matter. Music brought them together because we had social features to connect people based on musical interests. We started winning awards then. We even won the M Billionth Award organized by the Digital Empowerment Foundation here. And in 2015, we won the World Summit Award. I think I looked a lot younger back then, but Professor Brooke, you always look young. And who would have thought I'd be standing here reminiscing this 10 years after? 
But reading WSA, it changed my perception on many things because some of the most interesting projects I came across at WSA were designed to address people with disabilities. Did you know 16% of population globally, that's over 1.3 billion people, suffer from some form of disability? To give context, that's almost equal to the Indian entire population, or maybe in Chinese population, almost, I would say. And disability is not just what we think of as wheelchairs, white canes, and hearing aids. It's a lot more. It's a broader problem. It's both physical and non-physical, visible and invisible. Remarkably, close to 80% of disabilities are invisible because people suffer from flashing lights, fast-moving images, certain typography, or even color contrast on the screen. Some of us, even here, might silently suffer from these digital interfaces. And this realization profoundly changed the way I approach technology. I'll give you an example. It was in 2016. I was working on a project for a Fortune 500 company. Uh, we were building an iPad app as an executive reporting dashboard. And to my surprise, people started to complain that when they use our iPad app on a moving car, it caused them dizziness, motion sickness. So we quickly corrected it by tapping into the device sensors such as the gyroscope and the accelerometer to compensate these visuals and to stabilize them. And today, we are proud to see global giants following the same footsteps. The reason iOS 18 that you have on your device has vehicle motion cues with the exact same feature that I spoke about earlier. But this is available at the operating system level. So every app runs on your device now caters to this feature. And this is a very good example that every design choice we make impacts everyone's daily life often profoundly. And I want to encourage all of us Let's focus and start embodying equity into every system we design. Because when our technology includes everyone, we empower everyone. And I want to finally leave you with four examples today. We brought four great Australian projects to this global contest this year. Lend for Good, TraceX, Search, and ConsultMate. All four of them beautifully embody equity by design from completely different perspectives. So I'll pick just one out of it. Search, who made this entire conference premises accessible by digitally mapping on their app. I encourage you to talk to them, connect with them, and find out how they built their technology to include and respect every user. And we can do the same. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sachi, and uh, thank you for that inspiring personal testimony of how design doesn't just happen, but we can be in control of the design in such a way, but not only for the equity aspect, but the equity aspect opened up new market for you as well. 